good? All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the internet. Uh, I'm Nathan Vela. We're here at Evolution 2013. Uh, big props to the Dive Kit guys and Iron Galaxy for letting us come on the stream and uh, letting you check out some of the amazing and super rad independent games that are here at the Evo 2013 Indie Game Showcase. Uh, I'm here with my man David. We're going to talk about, right off the bat, diving right into it, Super Space Blank. Uh, it is a crazy weird game to have at Evo. Um, a lot of people wondering, uh, asking me, you know, what is this game and why is it at Evo? And I think, it's, first off, it's one of my favorite games of the past many years. Oh, wow. It's the party game to end all party games. You can play it nice and sober. You can play it a little uh, hammered if you want to as well. Um, tell us a little bit about Super Space Blank. Uh, why is it at Evo? What's going on with you guys at Evo? All right. Um, well, Super Space Blank is this, com this crazy competitive, cooperative multiplayer shooter, right? And I think it's really cool that you know you guys invite us out to Evo because we get to show players you know what cooperation is all about, right? This this convention's all about competition and competing. Well, we bring a little bit more of this cooperative side, right? Right. People when they first pick up the game, they're like, "Wait, this is competitive." Like at first, like they think, "Oh, it's just comp it's just a strict like you know couch co-op game, right? You know, we're just hanging out, you know, trying to play, get through the game together." But in reality, that you're competing against each other, right? Yeah, Teach I think that. One of the most interesting things for me about this game is the idea of working together until it makes sense to not work together. Right, right. Until you can decide to be like that one big D-bag and screw everyone up, or you can play perfectly. You can play as a team, working together to like really extend, like play through a whole bunch of different crazy ass levels with a bunch of different obstacles. Um, how do you, how do you make something that is equally cooperative and competitive? You know. <laughs> This is a hard question because we know we kind of struggle with that ourselves. Initially, this was completely uh, cooperative, but then we saw this element of people competing, and so we tried to emphasize that element by kind of incentivizing uh, competitive play with, you know, both points, but also stealing weapons. Right, this intrinsic uh, motivator of I can be more powerful than my friends. You know, let me let me try to like swing over and get this power up. And hey, if I pick up a bomb and I use a bomb, I can actually steal my teammates' weapons. Right, so. When it comes to uh, like the actual production of the game, yep. uh, le let us know a little bit about who's working on it, how many people are working on it, sure. how it started. Um, one of the big things about the, the showcase here at EVO is that they are all kind of competitive spirited games. They're all very independent games. Lots of these titles built by really tiny teams. Some of them are people's first projects. Um, and so we want to kind of give, like, give the fans, the folks on the stream a chance to like, you know, really check out where it came from and how it started. Okay. Uh, well, interestingly enough, uh, this game's actually a student project. Uh, it started off as a um, uh, junior project at uh, DigiPen Institute of Technology in uh, Redmond, Washington. And um, it basically just started off with Alex and I uh, building a prototype while also working on another game we had, but it was like complete shit. And so <laughs> we thought, hey, let's try out this game. This game seem seems to get people to yell at each other and stuff, and it's crazy fun. And so. Over about you know five months or so, we we prototyped this in an engine somewhat similar to Unity. It's a proprietary engine built by our school, but um, but yeah, we've just been play testing you know the hell out of this game, and uh, I think it's turned out pretty well. So I first saw this game at Indicade. Was it last year or the year before? It was last year. Yeah, last year at Indicade. Uh, giant lineups, people yelling and screaming, <laughs> some fighting. Uh, I remember a specific incident where a whole bunch of people from Sony were all playing together and oh, yeah. uh, were not very happy at each other. Um, so when it, when you see this game, you know, being played by fans, being like picked up and learned, and kind of like it's a very easy game to pick up and understand. It's a hard game to kind of really get. Yeah. Um, what is that? What is that? What's the the plan for? Like, what do you guys want to do with it? Where do you want to take it? Are you still working on it really hard? Is there lots more to go? Uh, it's kind of in limbo right now. I mean, we we have a version out right now for free on our website, superspaceblank.com. Uh, you can download it now, but we're kind of treating that as the alpha yep. for the game, right? So we're still kind of developing it and fleshing it out and just, you know, making sure that it's as balanced as can be because we still have to work out a little kinks with some of the level design and whatnot. But, um, but yeah, we're just we're still uh, plugging away at this game. And um, So are you guys still in school? Uh, yeah. You guys are rocking this while, while still doing school. Yeah. Badass. And uh, that's that's the kind of, in a weird way, the most independent thing ever. Right? <laughs> Not even a full-time job. I don't know. So uh, we're watching a bunch of footage right here. Game is pretty as hell. I think it looks amazing. Um, 
can you tell us a little bit about what's going on and kind of explain the game to people that are probably trying to pick it up on the stream <laughs> but like might need a little bit of a, a handhold? Yeah, sure. I mean, the basic game breaks down into a game of asteroids, except with this like giant red barrier around it. And if you touch that red barrier, you die. And that, that's that's the craziness where the craziness of this game comes out, right? Everyone's trying to do of dodge or avoid uh, red objects. And you're trying not to, you're trying to not be the guy that actually hits it. Right? Exactly. Or, well, you might. I mean, you might be trying to grief your teammates. You might like, hey, I have the highest score now. Let's just kill ourselves and I, hey, I win, right? But I don't know. Your and team the, might give you shit for that, so... And the entire ship, I'm air quoting yes. ship, you can see that on the stream. <laughs> the, the ship is propelled by where you're shooting. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. each of the four players is actually propelling the ship by shooting, but also doing damage, gaining points by shooting. Exactly. So there's this fine balance between self-interest and team cooperation, right? And so if there's a really greedy player, he's going to be shooting in the wrong direction, probably straight into something you, everybody else is trying to avoid, right? And... Uh, so right now, there, there's certain points in the game where uh, the competition almost goes away yep. or could go away. Like right now, players have to actually work together to push this blockade. Yeah. But you could probably be a real dickbag and stop and push the other way, totally. start turning yeah. the ship. Yeah, that's just part of uh, some of our level design, right? Some levels are strictly competitive, some are strictly cooperative, and uh, some are a little bit in between. But right here, this is a strictly competitive or uh, cooperative um, level focus just on movement, right? Because that's really how you cooperate in this game. Uh, so you, see, you can see there's a certain number of waves. Um, obviously, difficulty ramps up. But what's, what are the ways that the game gets harder for players? Um, so all of our waves are randomized. So it's a new game every time. And previous objects loaded in one wave will transfer to another. And so there's all these really weird, unique uh, combinations that take place. But yeah, uh, progressively, as players uh, keep going, the game gets more difficult. There's more secret waves that happen depending on certain events. Like if everybody bombs, you know, something could, something crazy could happen. Uh, I don't know. It's just a game you have to play around with, right? And I think it's really interesting that while we were talking about it being super cooperative, these guys are total, like totally playing together. No one's decided to turn on each other yet. Right. But at that, like, at, at a certain point, someone's gonna do it. Right? Yeah. That's, oh, that's totally. pretty much the the end game is not. Uh, like you win. The end game is somebody decides to screw everybody else. Exactly. Over. Yeah. Like if, like if they just used a bomb to you know clear the screen of object to kind of save everybody, there could just be that one guy that says, "Hey, I'm gonna go pick up all their weapons now that they're all scattered, right?" And so it could turn at any moment. So uh, for all those people checking out the stream right now, I give them a, a couple of things that that you, know, you think that they should do while they're playing the game. Like, but what's your strategy? What's your technique? Um, like, are you the dick? Some, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Thought so. I mean, I play this game no so fact. much. No, it's you know, it's unintentional dickness that happens. You know, right? It just, it's just how I am. Uh, really, people's, your friends' personalities will really come out in this game. You know, hey, it might end relationships. You know, if you play with your girlfriend, you know, that might not end well. But uh, I don't know. All right. So we got some people in the in the chat. If you got any questions, uh, uh, stream monsters, chat homies, uh, uh, hit us up. Uh, no Nidhog reveal uh, release date, unfortunately. Uh, mess off. Who is uh, who is here or will be here? Uh, it's it's a rad game, but we're not going to give away his his deets. Um, yes, that was definitely Kyle Pulver. Oh, Damien. Hi, Damien. Hi, <laughs> hi, Toronto. Uh, if you got any questions, hit us up. Um, and sorry to the people who thought we were streaming dive kick. Uh, no dive kick going on right now. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to add, Dave? Um, yeah, just go download the game, you know, please, you know, play test the hell out of it. Just go, you know, you got a party going on, bring this game, bring all these other games that they're about to show too as well, and uh, just have a good time. You guys have a, a, a Twitter? Uh, we have a Facebook account, just look up Super Space Blank, and then just go to our website and download the game and get news updates from there. It's super rad, man. Um, all right, we're going to check out a little bit more gameplay here. Um, we're going to, let's boost a full screen of the game. We'll let you take a look at some gameplay while while we switch out some some talkers. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay, we're all good. Uh, by the way, folks, uh, for for anybody uh, for anybody out there who uh, who doesn't know, um, I, I'm also the co-founder and president at Cappy. Uh, I'd like to say hi to all the Cappy folks who are watching, um, and uh, for all the people who are at Evo or coming to Evo, thanks for checking out Super Space Blank. Uh, if you're in the stream, thanks for checking out Super Space Blank. Will this game work on Oculus Rift? Eventually, maybe. Booyah! Yeah. Reveal. Oculus <laughs> Rift. It's happening. It will be $99.
It'll come sh with the Oculus Rift. Yep. Special edition. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna switch out. Uh, we'll take a little bit longer on the gameplay here. We're gonna have a, a special guest come in while we switch some games over. Um, Super Space Blank is badass. I, I love oh. the shit out of it, and Thanks, I super man. appreciate you guys. First of all, coming to Evo. Second of all, talking on the stream. Uh, and if anybody wants to hit those these guys up, they're gonna be here at Evo. You can hit them up online, play the game, probably have some beers while you're doing oh, it. Oh, definitely. No fist punching. No, no, no. Cool, man. Awesome. Thanks, thanks a lot, me. brother. Yeah, thanks. I'm going to see if, oh, there's some nice Cappy comments. Uh, you're welcome for the Steam sales. Thank you for the comments on below. We, we're super stoked about it. Um, so we're going we're gonna to swap out right now. Okay. Uh, we're going to get my homeboy, Seth Killian, to come in. We're going to do a little bit of chat while we change over to some Towerfall. Uh, everybody loves the Towerfall. Uh, Towerfall is a crazy-ass game. Uh, and we'll be talking to Matt Thorson in a second once it gets running. Seth, you want to step up? Uh. Awesome. I keep adjusting this microphone because it's totally messing with my head. I'm not used to it at all. It's super weird. <laughs> all right, so what's up, Seth? How are you? How's it going, man? I'm doing um, excellent. Evo Indie Showcase. <laughs> is this awkward? This is kind of awkward, isn't it? It is a little awkward. I feel very close to you right now. Yeah, I'm used to being close. At, nope, that's no. too close. Okay, that's too close. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, <laughs> first of all, for everybody out there who doesn't know, uh, I got a lot of the credit for, for air quotes organizing this, but Seth did most of the work. That's uh, uh, false, but it's uh, sweet of you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nathan is uh, one of the most rad dudes in indie games. Uh, Cappy is some of the coolest guys around. They make incredible games and uh yeah he was the first uh guy i thought of so part of the i guess i don't know if you talked about the background of the indie showcase no that's what you're here to do yeah right? yeah so uh the idea here is of course you know obviously there's a ton of uh cool people playing different games and obviously there's the tournament games and people in the bring your own console space so people plugging in all sorts of stuff saw some uh tmnt tournament fighters going down one of my old favorites the best worst game category but uh, getting a lot of indie games out, of course, is you know some good exposure for the indie games. Obviously, they need awareness and help, and that's great. Uh, but also, what I think it does for them is gives them an amazing group of playtesters who totally Absolutely. will shred their games yep. um, and give them really honest feedback. And uh, as you know, uh, oh, we're, we're up here with Towerfall. But just briefly, um, we got some time. That's good. Okay. <laughs> uh, Don't rush through this. This is like this is important. Yeah. Stuff. No. This is this is the reason. But um, you know. We had, uh, I, I invited uh, Chris Hecker last year, he's a cool indie guy um, making Spy Party, to come to EVO last year, and he wasn't really sure about it, and I said, just come, bring the game, and I guarantee you an EVO guy will become your number one play tester in a year. And he's like, well, which guy are you talking about? I'm like, I don't know. One of them. Just a guy Some will emerge from this awesome crowd of killers and become an awesome asset to your game and your development. And that's actually what happened. It so uh, Chris, being a cool guy, bought me a beer, said thanks. Uh, I got to meet the playtester. He's awesome, super smart guy. Top of the leaderboards. Yeah, and uh, they, they, it's just really cool. But so that's all pros for the indie community and for the people making these games, which I think is a really important thing. But for me, what really excited me about bringing indie games here and uh, thanks also, of course, to Tom Cannon for Absolutely. making this possible. Yeah. Uh, he gave Huge him a very, Tom, very yeah. healthy chunk of floor space for. Uh, the low, low price of, uh, of nothing, which zero is... Zero dollars and zero is, cents. Uh, really awesome of him. Absolutely. Because um, this Vegas floor space is ridiculously it expensive. It ain't cheap, yo. Um, but really what it was, as far as the Evo side of it and the, the players involved, was for me, um, reminding everybody here that although we take games very seriously and, you know, we, we're here to sort of honor the play and excellent players and competitive spirit, you can do it yourself. Absolutely. Like, there's so many paths forward for you in games. So you can... Me, I'm just some jerk off that used to play Street Fighter a lot, and uh, now here I am, uh, you know, getting to work at Sony Santa Monica and getting to work on some of my Capcom favorites uh, a while ago, and that was, you know, that's such a huge thing in my life. And now with indie games, it's totally possible. You, you were just working at a job you didn't love, yep. not loving it. Yep. Found some guys, got excited, made a game studio. Now you're, you know, indie uh, darling and. <laughs> Anybody can do this. Like that's true. we Especially, are, we are two idiots, and yeah, that's, that's uh, totally. We, we are and not. That's, it, it sounds like a joke, but that's actually the the real kind of message and important part about like Tom really like giving us this opportunity to bring these games is that 
there's, I mean, Tom himself is an independent game developer. That's true. He is now becoming yeah, an independent is, game developer, but, working on Stone Hearth. Shout but outs. it's also like there are probably in the audience of these thousands of people, there's probably hundreds of people who have the skills and passion and drive and ability to be making their own stuff and introducing them to the fact that this is super possible and pretty darn awesome at the same time. Being yeah. able to go to a booth and actually like talk to the developer who made a game by himself or with his friends or, or whatever, uh, I, I think it's super special and super important. So yeah. big, pro big props to Evo for, for bringing us out. Big thanks to Tom for doing it. Big thanks to you for, for hooking me up. Hey, this um, is rad and, stuff. It can and, change your life. Yeah, and big thanks to, to all the developers who, like, everybody came out. Uh, like, everybody who... Yeah, we were like, oh, I don't know if these guys will make it or maybe it'll be weird. And it was yeah. like 100%, yeah, we're We've in. Got, we got Sean Alexander showing Treachery in uh, Beatdown City on PlayStation Mobile. We've got Towerfall that we're going to talk about right now on Ouya. We've got PC games. We've got games built in Unity. I mean, it's it's running the entire gamut. Yeah. Anyways, super awesome. Let's get back to some games. Seth, you're going to talk to Matt Thorson about okay. some Towerfall. I'm going to we'll trade see you out in a minute. Matt. Yeah, we will. All right. Thanks, Nathan. And welcome to the stream shortly here. Uh, Matt Thorson, which is an epic sounding name. And he's going to show us Towerfall. Welcome hey. to the stream. Hey, thanks. thanks for coming. Yeah. Now, I, I, what I'm going to ask you to do first, I got a chance to sit down with this for the first time uh, here at EVO. Got in some uh, exciting matches. But explain to people that have not seen this game before or know anything about it, what's exactly, I think it's it's fairly transparent. Like, yeah. But give them some background. What's going on here? What are the options? What are the, uh, the play space? What's it all about? Yeah, OK. So it's like a four player versus archery platformer. It's kind of like Smash Bros, but one-hit kills. So it borrows from Bushido Blade in that respect. Yes, Bushido Blade, uh, one yes. of our uh, time-honored fallen <laughs> brethren. Yes, uh, very like very quick matches. It's really pick up and play, but there's like a lot of depth to be found if you stick with it. I noticed that that that, that became emergent very quick. And again, the rounds are it's yeah one-hit kill, you're dead. But we saw some skulls pop up there at the end of the thing. That's the scoring mechanism. Yeah. yeah. So the default game mode is you get points for kills mm -hmm. and you lose points for suicides. So GoldenEye rules. OK, very good. GoldenEye, another uh, treasured classic of our yeah. gaming past. Yeah, and so it's basically it's like a race in the standard mode that you've got on display here. It's like a race to 10. Yep. So that'll take place over the course of how many matches do you usually see in the in a typical race? This uh, one looked like a little bit of a blowout, but uh, yeah, yeah. So like anywhere from like six to twelve matches usually. Six yep. to twelve matches, and the matches can be. I've seen matches that are over in about like ten seconds. Yeah, or less. What's what's yep. your average? Do you think? Average? Oh, probably about fifteen seconds, fifteen twenty. Yeah, it gets a little crazy at the beginning because you don't. There's so many multiple targets and yep. multiple vectors of being attacked. Yeah. There, um, there's the moment when the stage loads where everyone's sort of looking and seeing like where am I going to go? Who's going to like come? Exactly. At me? Like what? Yeah. yeah what, what have I got going here? Tell me about the shields. Like, I notice sometimes I'm spawning with a shield. What's yep. that about? So the shields just allow you to take an extra hit. Okay. Uh, there is some auto-balancing in the game that, that can all be turned off. But by default, if you're at least three points behind the winner, you spawn with the shield. Oh, so you're calling me a loser. That's why I was spawning <laughs> with the shield, is because of uh, my poor play. I it's don't my first game. Come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have uh, and also my joystick didn't work, even though this game is not played with joysticks. It's a, <laughs> it's a common fighting game excuse here at EVO, is uh, blame the equipment. But uh, yeah, and so you've got also so there's there's double jump and sort of wall clings, right? or not a double jump rather, so, but a wall cling. Yeah, there's there's a dash move you can do where you just hit R. Uh, you can dash in eight directions. You can do it in the air. Uh, the and the dash is totally invincible. Yes, and if and for it, the fighting game guys, how many frames is the dash invincible? <laughs> I believe it's 45 frames. We don't we don't like that. That's a that's a healthy dash. That's it a, is a that's healthy, a healthy dash. window of invincibility. The, actually, one of the coolest parts of the dash is that if you're hit with an arrow while dashing, you'll catch it out of the air. Oh, okay, and that's another thing because the arrows are not infinite here. No. So you see the little arrow count above your head. Yeah. That's how many arrows you have. Yeah, you have to be very, very aware of your arrow count. Uh, you're always looking to pull arrows out of the walls. If you kill someone with an arrow, usually you'll want to approach the corpse and take the arrow back. Uh, you can use arrows as bait as well. Ah, so you shoot an arrow to, for a guy who's low on arrows, and then, yeah. oh, don't you want this delicious arrow? And then, yeah. bam, here's another arrow for you up your back side. common strategy. Yes, okay, that's cool. And we saw an arcing arrow there. There's. Tell me about the different types of arrows in the game. Yeah, so the default arrow just, it, uh, it has some seeking to it. So for um, is that I an auto seek or is it something you can bend? Is it, it a little it's bit an auto seek a, towards okay. its nearest target, its nearest enemy. I'd say that's pretty light though, right? Yeah, very yeah, light. Yeah. Very so light. it's not like it's an I shoot and then I'll just kill you. Like no, whatever, no, no. Even if you're There's jumping. definitely a lot of precision yeah. to the shots. Uh, it only has that for a period of time before gravity kicks in. That's okay. the standard arrow. Uh, there's three varieties of arrow power-ups. There's uh, bomb arrows that explode. 
There's laser arrows that bank off walls, so you can like. Yeah, I question. Cool. I question the titling of that laser arrow because I was like, "Cool laser arrow," and it really <laughs> is like a reflecting shot from Gauntlet. I feel like would be a more yeah. appropriate name <laughs> to noobs that don't understand that the laser arrow That's can true. in fact bounce off the wall. One thing and I love kill about the them. person who fired it, which I felt uh, a little a little salty about. One of my favorite parts of demoing the game is seeing players the first time they get laser arrows. <laughs> <laughs> and watching they them die, by the way, your poor choice of naming. So exactly. I'm glad you're stick <laughs> sticking to your guns with uh, with that angle. And then uh, what? I think uh, we got the laser bomb. Yeah, and the third one is Bramble Arrows, which are sort of an area denial uh, power-up. Okay, spread. that's, that's all like a blue sort of uh, effect on the ground? Like uh, It depends on your player color. So oh, okay, okay, right. For green, they'll be green. Uh, it's just these brambles that spread on walls or floors where you shoot the arrow. And so that's you can, deadly? Yes, okay. yeah. One hit kills as So it's sort of like else. a persistent bomb, in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah in yeah. a sense. Okay. It's, it's really good for like locking off different options for the players. And if you, you can see sort of these guys someone. that are dropping through, because of course it's the, yeah, the, the scroll. Screen wrap. Yeah, screen wrap. Yep. So if, they, if they're screen wrap, you know, this seems like a common strategy, because it's generally not, it, correct me if I'm wrong, it's generally not advantageous to be below. So the low ground is not the strongest. It's not yeah. like you're dead on the low ground. Yeah, well, there, you there have is more gravity. Options above. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just because of gravity. But also, the screen wrap is one of the most dangerous places to be. Like, to be right near the top of the screen where someone can easily pop down on you without you being aware of them. And now here's a question I didn't see answered in the game because I was too busy trying to not die to experiment with this. Can I fire an arrow through the screen wrap and have that wrap yep. as well? Okay. Yep. So it yeah, is very dangerous. You won't even see it coming. Yeah, exactly. All yeah, right. it, it, that's actually one of the more high-level skills is becoming aware of the entire screen. Yeah. 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 Usually, you just want to stay clear of the screen wrap unless you're using it for some sort of strategy. And you get, uh, again, so at the beginning, it's sort of a scramble and a little bit of a mad dash where it's it's hard to totally effectively strategize because there's so Especially many different things player. that can happen. Yeah, and four-player. Yeah. So how do you think it's best played uh, for people that will take this game competitively? as will inevitably happen. Yeah, I think 1v1 has a lot of potential there, uh, but 2v there's team deathmatch mode. Okay. And 2v2, I think, has a lot of potential. It's uh, it's a lot slower paced, more strategic. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff where, like, the two of you will try to sandwich one enemy, that kind of stuff. So it's all, the game is very about positioning. Right. It, it sort of borrows that from Smash Bros. Well, that's, so that was the thing that I, so I liked, I mean, I liked the scramble at the beginning because it's sort of a mad dash and you're like, okay, am I going to try and turtle and like hide for a little while? Yeah. And I like, but the game gets really interesting when it's down to like you and the last person. And you yeah. Get some time. So there's a timer as well. What's the, what's the time limit uh, that that's, you have to set? By default, there's a timer where if any players are sitting out, then 30 seconds. Okay. Then it'll just kill everyone. Okay. So you actually die if you don't kill, if yeah. you don't kill all your opponents. But it so. doesn't affect the score. Okay. So you don't lose a point yeah. for being timed out. It's just so that no players have to sit out for a long time. Right. But like like pretty much everything in the game, it can be turned off. The game is like extremely customizable. Yeah. I'll say that. Like it's, uh, you know, as someone who used to play a little Counter-Strike, like if you get like <laughs> sniped very early in Counter-Strike, it's painful to like sit there yeah. and like wait for the next match. Um, uh, this game, you know, even when I get uh, blown away right at the beginning, I felt like I was still enjoying it and still like the matches are so fast. You're yeah. like back in there. You don't really like, have time to regret it. Yeah, the spawn time in most uh, FPSs is, is about the time of a whole match <laughs> in this game anyway. Yeah, yeah. Pretty so much. yeah, it's uh, I, yeah, I see it right away. You see the gravity there. It's like people just shooting straight up. And yeah. You can shoot in uh, the eight deck. So yeah, up, down, left, right, diagonals. and then the diagonals yeah. as well. That's the same as the dodging. It's all eight directional. But then the interesting bit comes in because, of course, there's gravity and then a little bit of homing. Yeah. And now, can I finesse that? Is something? Is that something I can control with the controller if I uh, shoot the arrow to angle it up? Or uh, no, you can't. Okay, it's I thought I was slick. I thought I had some sort of homing arrow because I was sort of holding up when I shot the arrow, and I think it must have just been the auto homing. So yeah, yeah. Now I feel even I less cool it. than but I. But the, uh, the did homing before. is actually really easy to predict once you get used to it, though. Okay. So you can sort of. You can pull off some crazy shots. You can tell, uh, yeah, and so yeah. that's where it is. So it's not just sort of like a very 8 bitty kind of like, yeah. in these eight directions I can shoot, and those are my vectors. Yeah, it gives us The vectors get a lot more complicated than that, so you can pull off some interesting stuff, especially yeah. with the with the arrow modifiers. And I noticed also, is it a one-hit kill if you were able to uh, Mario and, and sort of jump on the oh, opponent's yeah. head? Yep, yep, stomping on players. Okay. Sort of a uh, dangerous strategy. Arrows are a lot more, like if you're up against someone with arrows, they'll probably... Shoot you out of the air yeah, or something? Yeah, you're probably not going to get to them. Yeah, I had somebody, last resort. somebody screen wrapped and uh, um, jumped on my head. <laughs> them happen is when you're at the top of the screen. It's sort of a balance for the high ground. And so some of these players are pretty good and they are grabbing the arrows out of the air with that grab. Uh, yeah. What's the grab window? Is that tighter than the 45 frames or is it no, any time in the dash? The entire 45 frames. Wow, that yeah. seems very strong. All right, so yeah. we'll, we'll get some guys here to uh, wreck this and make sure that you decrease that dash. Uh, <laughs> Dash window, they'll show you why it's uh, totally broken. Yeah. Two guys grabbing each other's arrows. The one one downside, forth. there are a lot of grabs, but the cooldown is also 
pretty hefty. Okay, there so, we go. Now that's now we're talking. Yeah, the so that, fairness is uh, back in the land. What's the what's the cooldown on the dash? Um, I think. Okay, I'm, my I'm numbers might be wrong here. I'm pretty sure someone I lied tell to you, you someone about. Someone at this event will tell you if the numbers are wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because they'll have counted it by the end of this uh, weekend. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I lied to you about the dash frames. I think it's 40 20. Okay. But I'll have to check it. All right. But all right. Well, we'll forgive you this time. Yeah. And then these things change. I mean, whatever. You're, you're. You, so the game is actually out now and available on Ouya. Yep. But it's. Would you say it's still in development? Is it something you're planning on on patching yeah. and going forward with? Are you happy with it now? Yeah, I'm very happy with it. But it's still in active development. I uh, there's a lot of things I want to add to the versus mode, and I also want to add some single player content. Okay. What are what are the what are our hopes of uh, an online as well? Online. Um, Online is a bit of a, big a wild card right now. It's a challenge, yeah. and it's something I'm not sure I want to do, really. Yeah. I hear you. Because, and so talk to me about that. Why, why is that something you not want to do? Because I think I think I understand where you're coming from, but mm -hmm. I think players might, might, might wonder about that. Obviously, it's difficult, but yeah. you have uh, maybe some philosophical reasons why you, yeah. you think that Design well. wise, it's Yeah, design-wise, playing an online game is just very different from being right beside your opponents. Uh, the game is really designed to be like right there with them, so you can like trash talk, hit each other, that kind of stuff. That's that's what Evo is all about. So, I mean, exactly. literally, that's why why this event has the format it has. And, you know, there's not really online qualifiers or anything like that. Yeah. It's just right there in your face, going back to our uh, arcade roots. And this game has a lot of incredible... I don't know if I'd want to be playing, well, certainly not a quarter of a game, but maybe <laughs> no. for, the, for the whole game, that would be viable. Yeah. Uh, but it definitely has, like, a really fun arcade mechanic. How long did you work on the jumps and things like that? Because the jumps feel good, the wall clings feel good. Yeah. I noticed that that's... I'm a mechanics nerd, so I, I noticed that kind of thing yeah. right away. And like, it's obviously a good game concept, but it seems like you've spent some time really focusing on that and getting yeah. the feel right. The player controls and just the feeling of controlling the player is really important to me. It's been a continuous process for the whole development for like the last year. Uh, I actually added a whole move to the move set like a week before release. Even wow. uh, <laughs> there's a slide dash if you duck and slide. Wow. It, it doesn't uh, come into play very often, but it it helps you like slide under one tile gaps. And, it, it, if you slide dash into another player, you'll send them flying away. Okay, now you're now you're now you're exciting some fighting game guys. <laughs> so can I do like a slide dash and cancel that with a jump or something yep. like that to give me a different like velocity or? You can also cancel dashes oh just in general with wall jumps. Well, I think you just sold an Ouya, <laughs> uh, as well as yeah. I was I was hoping to dodge. That I have too many games already to try and keep up with, much less keeping up my uh, Street Fighter yeah. skills. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think I might have to do that now because that's that's where I'm. You start to get some of that expressive possibility really in the yeah. game with uh, where it's not just running around and shooting like this guy's slide dashing and he's getting the big jump across the gap and yeah, that's very exciting. That's awesome. So, what do you have any competitive history? I don't. Are we talking too long uh, about Towerfall? We're talking. We've talked for quite a while. Um, yeah, we're talking a little bit about Uya right now. So I I, I, I think you just sold me one, uh, which I'm <laughs> kind of bitter about. Um, <laughs> But uh, so, what's your what's your? I mean, you name checked a few games: Bushido Blade, yep. uh, uh, Golden Eye, um, obviously Smash Brothers. Yeah. What's what's your personal gaming background? What are some of your? Are those your favorites, or are there games you were competitive at, or or uh, played a lot with friends? Yeah, Smash Bros. Just played a lot with friends. I did uh, briefly attempt to enter the competitive uh, scene in that, and I was uh, pretty <laughs> brutally shot down. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you just got to get back up and ride that yeah, horse yeah, again. Yeah. No, I know, I know, I know what you mean. Uh, Actually, another big game I love is TF2. Um, oh yeah, I play that competitively a little bit. And it's got that same sense of fun. Like obviously, TF2 is a deep competitive game. Yeah. But it's got that sort of quick sort of, and it's got doesn't take itself too seriously. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's yeah, an there's element of silliness a, to it. A twitch kind kinetic. of like immediacy and fun, and yeah. a little bit of zaniness on the mechanics. I think a lot of the importance of positioning comes from TF2 as well. I see a lot of TF2 in there. And also, one thing I haven't discussed, uh, character types. What's that about? They actually all play identically. Okay, so yeah. it's just more of a cosmetic thing. At yeah, it's just you pick whichever one you okay, think is coolest. Okay, I sweat a lot over which character I picked, and now you're telling me it was just basically <laughs> yeah. a hat that I was pretty wearing. Much. Okay. It's pretty much a hat. My hat had a big L on the forehead because uh, I, I actually did succeed in winning one game, but uh, it was I, I don't know if it was well-deserved. I guess I got... <laughs> It was my second game, and uh, maybe the other guys were even bigger noobs than I was. But this is my chance to get in on the ground floor yeah. of Towerfall. So this game is out right now on Ouya. Do you have plans for other? I, maybe that's not a discussion. For no, now. I, I have plans for PC. Okay. I, I definitely want to release on PC. Um, beyond that, no plans yet. But obviously, I want as many people to play as possible. Yeah, that's that's any anybody with a competitive game. Uh, 
I've gone on about this at length before, but like the more people are playing it and developing strategies and thinking about your game, yeah. literally sort of the more value it has. Like it yeah. actually gets like cooler and better. And the fact yeah. that, you know, if I'm the best player of a game that only two people play, you know, maybe I'm really good at Clay Fighter, but no one's playing Clay Fighter, so yeah. no one cares. But if you have a game that's uh, big, uh, has, has a big scene, uh, or has a lot of people interested in it, I think that means a lot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, even if it's just your friends coming over, because this is definitely, yeah. is par party game is sometimes used as a, as a negative, but that's part of your philosophy is yeah. literally to get together. And you said partying also figured largely in your playtesting. I was at your Indie Games panel earlier. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, the game, like, the community of the game is really important to me. I really want to grow it. Um, uh, and the community really started as just me and my friends in my basement playing the game every weekend. Uh, and the game just got refined that way. And now with Ouya, I have this small, dedicated player base again. It was slightly larger, obviously, but sure. like, uh, and we're just so saying Ouya's competitive community larger than your basement. Yeah. Okay, that's good. They're, <laughs> Definitely they're larger on than the road. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, again, I'm just refining the game with their feedback further. And yeah, hopefully by the time it gets to PC, it'll be like rock solid. Nice. Yeah, well, I mean, everybody who's played this, like, I was talking to a bunch of journalists as well. They seem very excited about the game. Uh, so we're really proud to have it here. And, uh, Awesome. Thank you very much for coming. I don't know any final final words or thoughts. Should we take some questions from the stream? Yeah, questions would be awesome. Played it at NY's, NYU Showcase last spring. Is that is that true? Is that man no. a liar? That man is a liar. Liar. Okay, so you played something else. Wait. Oh, actually, no. He might uh -oh. not be a liar. I might have redeemed. That, that might be slander. Yes. All right. <laughs> if the game has been around. Um, I've been sending it to a lot of developer friends. It's been at a lot of events. It was at E3 at the IndieCade Showcase. Awesome. I've kind of lost track of all the events. All the events. Uh, let's, I don't know, any other questions from the stream? Uh, I uh, see Alec the musician for the game in the stream. Chatting people <laughs> up. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome, Alec. Some fine work. Should we talk about the music? Any angles there? He's just a cool guy. Did some yeah, music. he's just a cool guy. The music is, is really... Is he a professional game developer or just another yep, friend with he some is. talent? He, uh, we live together. <clears throat> Excuse me. We live together in what's called Indie House. Oh, I'm familiar with the Indie House. I didn't yeah. know you guys were residents. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I prefer the narrative that he was just some guy that you drafted. So some guy everybody the street hope. Yeah. with a piano. All right. Now, unfortunately, he's talented. All yeah, right. unfortunately. Or a, a, a proven game developer. Oh, here's the laser arrows coming out. <laughs> some, yeah, some I really... Cast. And that was some invisibility there as well? What uh, else is going on there? Yeah, so there's a invisible... Yeah, invisibility mirror power up. Okay, which, and uh, that's a power up not for your arrow. It's just an overall power up. Yeah. Okay. So uh, and then there's wings as well. Yeah, it makes you invisible as long as you don't shoot or dodge. Can you stack power ups? Yep. You can have shield, invisibility, wings, and nice. a bunch of special arrows. And then I kept getting one that was not as cool, like the dark, where it just turns the screen dark. Yeah, it, it uh, makes the level dark. So you can't. Sometimes you can't see what parts are solid, what parts are background. Right. Yeah. You're sort so of you can, you're jumping based on sort of memory of uh, yeah. the level. And arrows, you do you do give off light yourself, so you can sort of see around you. But arrows don't give off light, so you can surprise someone with an arrow easier. Okay. Very cool. And yeah, that's that was like not a clear positive for me. It was sort of like, well, this it's, is just affecting the you know it's just yeah. a change up. More it's than more it of is, a, like a clear it's a positive once you're better at the game. <laughs> no offense, but <laughs> it's I, uh, a it's a positive. I am gonna be offended. This interview is over. <laughs> Next. <laughs> it's a positive at the higher level because you will be expecting it and no one else will. Now, how many arrows did he just fire off? Was that a function of the laser arrow that it just looked like four at once? What's yeah, the... they leave behind a trail. That's okay, so that wasn't like a weird, like that guy just had like the thumbs of steel to thumbs fire off like four, four arrows. Is yeah. That, is that a term? Thumbs of Zeus? I, it is now. Okay, done. You heard it here first. Thumbs of Zeus. That'll be the name of your first uh, turn. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was super well owned. That was super, super owned. owned. Let arrows. that replay rock. Yeah. Let it rock. They're even slow-moing oh. it. During the replays, you can uh, hold R for slow-mo, so Orange that's, is doing some bragging there. That's awesome. Well, that's a pretty swag ending. Uh, I don't know. Anything else? I think we're good, and we got some other games to check out. So awesome. Thank, thank you, you very much. Enjoy, yeah. the, enjoy the weekend. So that was Matt Thorson with Towerfall, uh, a game he created on his own, well, with a few, uh, some help from his friends. How many people do you think worked on Towerfall? It was Pretty much three. I th I'm going to say three. Oh, uh, is this a guess? I didn't mean to make you guess. Oh, well, I I know, I know Matt did a lot of it. Um, yeah, I I, <laughs> I wish I knew actually. A limited number. I, I actually, but this again, is, this like, is this something is, this is a legit this, fun game. Like that's actually out on Uya and 
that he mentioned in the panel, it's doing quite well and has already yeah. paid for its own development. Absolutely. So it's all upside from here. And then if he as he expands to other platforms, there'll be some additional sales and even more revenue. So, you know, some of and these games strike it big and yep. end up making a ton of money. Other times you're gonna make enough money to like just keep continuing, you know, that was something that Chris Hecker mentioned. Uh, yeah, in the showcase for sure. Also, shout out to to Alec who did the music for Tower. He's Fall. apparently He's, in the chat. Yeah, Alec is Alec killed it. The tunes are rad. The audio is rad. You're getting thumbs up from everyone here, Alec. So uh, res respect, man. Um, here we go. I, I got the heads up from from Alec. Uh, studio Mini Boss equals two people. SFX. Power up audio equals two people. All right. So there's you, four people max on a crazy ass game like Towerfall. It, that's I mean that's that's what it's all about, right? That's yeah. that's kind of like I mean, you've got everywhere from, you know, one guy making a game to a team of two, three, four girls and guys to like you know, every every game that's here at the showcase is this like really, you know, unique path to how you got your game getting made. But they um, can all probably be counted on a hand. Yeah, totally. Like, I think every team here can be counted on like but most of them can be t counted on a single finger. I think there's a <laughs> lot of solo dev games. And that, I mean, that's, it's such an amazing thing to see, you know, Mr. Chris Hecker, how much he's been able to do on Spy Party solo and yeah. how beneficial that's been to him as like a different methodology for game development. And he can realize his vision. Like that's, that's one thing I can say about uh, having worked on some larger teams. It can be really hard. You have a clear vision for the game and as you add more people and get more people involved, it's harder and harder to maintain that vision and make sure it comes across and everybody's on the same page. And you know that running Absolutely. a relatively large indie studio. Oh yeah, totally. And I mean, we, I mean, we get really lucky. We have a, a lot of people who have been with us for a, a really long time. And so that, that becomes a kind of like Thing that just right. happens you, it's naturally. It's part of the studio culture. Everyone For sure. sort of is on the same page. But and if they're not, they're, uh, yeah. You, you open <laughs> the no. trap door on the floor and then they... We push a button yeah. and laser sharks and shit like that. Um, <laughs> we spent all so of our money on this laser shark. I, I've, I've just remembered it's very important. A uh, bunch of people watching, do us all a favor. Um, this, this stream only happened because the Iron Galaxy folks were super cool, hooked us up, uh, get, let us stream using the dive kick. Uh, tools. Mr. Um, Dave Lang. Mr. Dave Lang. Mr. Adam Keats, Hart. Yes. Uh, and, everybody's uh, favorite. Um, so do us all a favor. Go to greenlightdivekick.com. Help. Like Greenlight is something that requires people to be active and, and pick those games that they think uh, really deserve to be on there. And Divekick's one of those games, guys. Like it's it's stupid fun in the smartest way. Yeah. It's uh yeah. It's, it's and and you're you're a character. Oh no, no. Yes. I don't. I'd almost forgotten. Like that wasn't supposed to come up here again. But uh, oh sorry. We've Love got a, we've got a tournament dive kick player who says I'm the best character in the game. Uh, I think that's a, a dirty lie. Um, but I'd never lose to Jafali. So uh, yeah. Whatever the opposite of shout outs. Cheer, <laughs> cheers. No. Cheers to Jafali. Cheers, cheers to uh, The character I will never lose to. Uh, and he's been he's been challenging me all weekend. So yeah, obviously dive kick, one of the great actually success stories here. I mean, Absolutely. really got its one of Evo its first Indo big footballs. Well, yeah, the Evo Indie Showcase, Indie Showcase, and he did a successful Kickstarter that then uh, attracted the attention of Iron Galaxy and Dave Lang, and uh, they decided to put it out, and now it's coming to uh, PlayStation Network, and uh, should be fantastic, and and maybe Steam Greenlight as well if uh, everybody on the stream. Uh, Gives them a little bit of love, so and very, very awesome guys. Also, uh, tonight at 7 p.m., uh, Iron Galaxy Divekick have a big announcement. They're they're talking about price. They're talking about an actual release date for Divekick. So there you go. You guys are all going to go down to well, probably not me because I am a fraud, uh, but somebody on the internet will kick your ass at Divekick. Yes. Um, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna get my, my homeboy Ben Ruiz in here. We're gonna talk about some Aztez. This, Seth, is, this, is, this is a guy that knows a lot about combat. So yeah, he's a fighting he, game nerd of the highest order. He makes me feel so stupid all the time. <laughs> I and this is a beautiful game. So enjoy, guys, and I'm gonna get Ben Ruiz in here right now. Absolutely, Seth. Thanks a lot, brother. You, get your ass on stream. Also, I could really go for this beer here. Whoosh. Ben, Ben, Ben. Uh, ben is on the internet. I'm so glad we have this. I'm losing my voice already. Yeah, you're you're you're, you're gonna last less. you're gonna last like four seconds top. <laughs> All right, so we already got Aztez on the stream right now. Everybody's checking it out. We're here with Ben Ruiz. You are. How many different jobs do you have on the game? Uh, art, 
effects, animation, combat design, environment art, yeah, everything you're looking at. Everything that ain't code is you. Yeah, and, and Matthew, the guy playing, you're looking at his face right now, he does all the code, he does a lot of the uh, high-end design, helps him with the, the other half of the game we haven't yet revealed. Yeah. But, Many yeah. of you know Matt Wagner from uh, Independent Game Summit, uh, the founder of Flashbang, yeah, Flash uh, various forms of awesome, yeah. also uh, takes really sexy photos. Indeed. Um, <laughs> so, Ben, give us the lowdown on Aztez. Um, we were, you were here last year at the yeah. Indie Showcase with, yeah, yeah. A, with a build that was uh, gorgeous, but not anywhere near as gorgeous as this. Right. Um, right. So give us the lowdown. What 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 is what is Aztez? What do people what should people know about it? So Aztez is sort of my love letter to the genre. So beat 'em ups is always my favorite type of game. Uh, as long as I've been playing games, very young age. Grew up in the arcade, of course. So. Love this shit to death. Um, born yeah, inside of an arcade. Yeah, go okay. for it. Man. You were born inside <laughs> yeah, an arcade exactly. machine. I was born in an arcade machine. I kicked my way out. Um, but yeah, just uh, the last 10 years of beat em ups, the combat has gotten incredible. It's just gotten better and better. But the game experiences themselves have just gotten worse and worse and more boring and tedious. And I hate it. And uh, like Bayonetta is an example. Like some of the finest combat I've ever seen in a game. And it's just the most rote, uninteresting game ever. So. We're, we're trying to do something about it. So, I mean, obviously I'm obsessed with combat. I've been prototyping this stuff for a long time, and we've been working on Aztecs for a long time, but what we've yet to reveal is sort of this uh, much more interesting game structure. So we're, we're hoping to just do anything differently just to kind of keep the formula fresh and, and make it not be the kind of game that you play for a couple hours and then never touch again. Right. So, yeah. so Aztecs that we're seeing right, like the part of Aztecs that we're seeing right now is the, the core combat yeah. kind of like the, the guts of the, the battle system. Right, so right. So yeah, so when, when it's all said and done, you're going to be going back and forth between a map of the Aztec Empire and this real-time combat stuff. The, the Empire mode will be like turn-based. So you'll go back and forth between making decisions and, you know, kicking ass in real time and, and inside scrolling beat em up combat. So the way we see it, like, it might be a terrible combination. It's going to be super weird to go back and forth between the two game types, but it can't be any worse than, you know, God of War <laughs> or Bayonetta. And I love those games to death. I'm not ripping yeah. on them, but I just, it can't be any worse. You yeah. know what I mean? So well, we'll see. I, I think it gives you an opportunity to try to make something that speaks to you. And oh, yeah, as sure. we as we all know, uh, most of us who have, have made games independently before, right. the games that speak best to you tend to speak best to the yeah. fans and an yeah, audience. For sure. and, and that really breathes through in this game to me. I right. mean, I remember picking it up and, I mean, Evo was a fantastic place for this oh, game. Oh yeah, oh no, it's the best, hands down, hands We've, down. Last year, uh, I watched the same person come back like 18 times yeah. and get ridiculous game-breaking, yep. like yep. ultra combos that should never ever happen. Yep. Um, and but I, I had no idea that stuff could happen, by the yeah. way. Like, when I saw this person do it, it blew my mind because it was something I didn't even realize my own game can do. And that's why I love this crowd. Like, it's in their nature to exploit systems and find the holes and find the gaps in the armor. And these people totally find it, and it's awesome. It's like, I, I always leave Evo with, like, a huge list of things to make better or keep or, or reinforce. And, yeah, it's, it's so fantastic. And it's also interesting, too, that you can just hand them a controller. Oh, yeah. Like, no, it's awesome. It's yeah. I, one of my favorite, I love PAX for that same reason too. Yeah. Like there is a certain group of people at PAX that require a little bit of lessons, but like in general, you can just hand controllers off. And that's right. the, the best case scenario for development, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, so a couple things about Aztez that I think are worth talking about. First of all, uh, being built in Unity. Yes, yep, completely in Unity. And, and what, can you give us a little bit of a lowdown of why that was the, why you made that choice? What opportunities, from a development standpoint, that it allows you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had used Unity the entire time Matthew and I were at Flashbang together, and that was like a four or five year period. And uh, when when Flashbang sort of fizzled out because a lot of the guys went to go do different things, and it was just him and I left. Um, you know, we kept doing contract work in Unity. We kept prototyping fun stuff in Unity. So it really is just like the most comfortable, powerful thing we know, you know, and so it just kind of made sense to just keep doing it. We have a really good relationship with Unity. So, you know, we, we actually have friends on the team we're able to say, hey, you know, this is what's awesome, this is what's not. And, and you know, we've got a little bit of priority there, which is cool, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's what makes the most sense and for us. Do you think, um, I'm totally branching off the Aztez topic, but yeah. branching into stuff that is also pertinent to independent development. Do you yeah. think Unity has so much like kind of like like buzz and cred and right. um, very deserved? Absolutely, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Like 
Like the jobs that I had before I started working at Flashbang and using Unity, it was all proprietary engines that the people at these teams wrote from scratch. And uh, using these tools to just push simple art assets into a game, huge pain in the ass. Like it shouldn't be like that. You know, I remember like it, it, it took me three weeks to get up and running with Unity and it blew my mind how fast we could actually iterate. And that's why we've kept with it, you know, like, like you can, you, it's a really important part of game development to get to idea to the part where you know it's fun or not. Yeah. And with Unity, you can do that instantly. That's awesome. You know what I mean? And so with proprietary engines, it's like, oh, it took us 18 months to realize this game isn't fun because we spent so much time on tech. Yeah. Not interested in that. So back, we'll hop back to the game. Yeah. Um, character has a bunch of different moves at his disposal. Yeah. Um, what's kind of the like, what's the optimal play style? Not maybe not optimal, but what like what's one way that you can play using the different kind of like you've got you've got your typical like you know uh, shield bashes or right, sword right. strikes, but there's also air dashing. Yeah. There's yeah. also grappling. Right. There, like there are a lot of tools at your disposal. Huge amount of tools. Yeah. So the way I see it, I like when beat 'em ups are very expressive. Um, my metric for, for a very expressive beat-em-up is when you can watch five different people play it and you can see five completely different play styles. So there isn't necessarily like a directive other than all the stuff has to feel good because I want people to find the things they like and use them. I mean, at the end of the day, we're probably going to reinforce the use of certain things because right. it's a game and yeah. you should do that. Absolutely. But for the most part, like I just I want people to, to find a handful of mechanics they like and just kick ass with it and just have a great time. You yeah. know, I, 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 don't really like being shoehorned when I'm playing, you know, most modern beat-em-ups and there's so many things I want to sit there and do, but I can't for whatever reason. And I'm saying, fuck that, you can do whatever you want and this, have fun. Yeah. I mean, like you said, there's so many tools. Uh, in this build now, there's two weapons, but when it ships, there will be four. Nice. So, and, and there's as many mechanics in one weapon set as there is in all the others. So it really is just have fun. Like, don't one stick to one, just do whatever feels good. One of the things that I noticed playing it, and I played the crap out of it last Evo, <laughs> yeah, right. is, that, is that, like, there are, there are uh, like, the button, a bunch of different buttons do a bunch of different things. Right. But, so there is a learning curve. Correct. But once you get past that, and, and I think that's a good thing. I love games right. that have a learning curve that require you to spend some skill and, right. and, and to take some time that's not going to hold your hand. Right. That personally really speaks to me. Yeah. But once you got over this little kind of hump, yeah. um, it was all about kind of like creativity. Like how can I kind of game these systems and try to like, yeah. and, and I think that like, I mean, I obviously I read all the crazy shit that you write and, oh, awesome. and everybody on the streams, if you're interested in beat em ups or combat design, uh, you put a lot of it up on Gamma Sutra. You put a lot of it up on your blog. Yeah, it's mostly up on the blog, aztes.com. Yeah, yeah I've, been, I've been compulsively but, writing about combat for years now. So, yeah, it, I think there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of interesting. Like, you got a lot of strong opinions. Right. But I, right. I think that it, what it ends up, it, it really expresses itself through the game. Sure. Like I can actually like. I mean, it, it sounds super hokey, but I can tell that this is your game because there's so, like, I can mash some oh, buttons, no, sure. yeah. but I can also play super smart. And I think yeah. that's like trying to find the balance between those different types of players. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to check out the stream chat here. There's a whole yeah. bunch of people. I'm going to see if there's any questions. Uh, hey to all the Unity devs. Lots of Unity love going on right here. Uh, thanks for, for putting the links in the chats as well. Um, definitely check out Aztez.com. Um, so there's... For for people who are not familiar with stuff like air dashing and or like launchers yeah. or or like OTGs, right? Um, all kind of hardcore parlance that right. actually like is really simple to understand. Right. Um, do you want to do you want to explain the different type of moves that you can do in the game? Because like it, normally I'm not a huge fan of like let's go into detail, well, but right. like to me this is kind of like part of what Evo is about is these kind of like core components right. of combat. Totally, totally. I mean the thing is is that I, I had a goal from the very beginning. Um, one of the problems that I've always had with Devil May Cry, and I love Devil May Cry. I know death. you love it. I love, love it so much. But the problem I've always had with the games is that you, you have these inputs that will involve like upwards of three or four buttons. And that's one of the reasons the game is so inaccessible. Like most people can't handle like that much. And when you're doing that, you know, rapidly over the course of a five minute Carpal fight, tunnel. yeah, it's super overwhelming. And so I had to go right from the start to not ever have anything be more than two inputs. So. The bulk of the game are, in this I call them command moves, but you combine up and down with one of the two attack buttons. So the reason I did that is because A, there's a huge amount of people already familiar with the Smash Brothers paradigm, right? Yeah. So it, it's, it's an easy thing to do, and I'm sure that's why Nintendo did it, you know, they're geniuses like that. Um, but yeah, like nothing, 
nothing requires a huge amount of input. Like the most you're ever going to push is two buttons. Maybe you're going to dash and then do a command move. That's like as bananas as it gets. Yeah. And that's part of the accessibility. Like, you know, I've got instructional cards set up at the booth over there and it's like people can look at it and very quickly see, oh, these are my tools. Yeah. Nothing is intimidating. Nothing looks scary to do. Yeah. Awesome. And then they can use it. And I think the idea of like, uh, simplicity breeding depth is a very yeah. important component of, of games in general. Sure. The, the best stuff is stuff like, I, I mean, I, we're obviously all big fighting game fans. Right, and I think right. one of the most interesting things about fighting games is the balance between complex inputs and, and easy inputs and, right. and the fun that falls in between there. Yeah, and it's funny you say that because there's actually like a, a big paradigm similarity between this and Street Fighter because in Street Fighter you've got six inputs and then you have redundant versions of those inputs in the air and on the ground. So in assets, it's the same idea. You've got this handful of inputs, you've got the same inputs in a grab state and in an air state. And so that way, that's me saying, all the stuff that you've done on the ground, you can do in these other, other two states as well very right. easily. You'll get different stuff and have access to different mechanics, but it's the same input. Like, no need to memorize this huge rule book of, right. of You just inputs, need to know, you know what button does what. Yeah. And that's, it, then you're states, good. States, simple inputs. That's the whole gist right there, yeah. Badass. Yeah. We're going to check the chat again, see if there's any other questions. Uh, lots of lots of love for the art as well. Cool, uh, yeah, that's always that always feels good to hear. Motion blur love. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I, th I think like it is a very striking art direction. Um, Thanks. I yeah. mean, you've seen a lot of people do the like black and white, but I don't think anybody's right. really done it in this way. Yeah. Um, and uh, animation-wise, fluid as hell. I mean, I'm like, yeah. I, I think it. Even at this stage, and I know it's it's still you know deep in dev, right. and it, 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 you could ship with these graphics and be happy yeah, with that. Yeah, I, mean, no, I think that's, I, that's a cool spot to be in too, because for sure. games like these, uh, in my opinion, and this is the way that Cappy works a lot too, is you need to see polished art to understand the oh, yeah. feel. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Because the feel changes like when the impact effect changes. Yeah. All of a sudden, the exact same timings. Yep. yep. Nothing, it's, I can't think of a situation where it's in, in which it's more important than if you're making a beat em up. Yeah. Because it feels like garbage until you have an amazing impact effect, good audio, good animation. So, like, I've been polishing from the start. And I think that's part of the reason it's turned out as solid as it has, is because I've been on it from the very beginning. Like, yeah. the feel had to be good from the start. I didn't even make a second mechanic until I made one that felt fucking incredible. You yeah. know what I mean? That's, and, that's really right. And that had a lot to do with it, for sure. So, just uh, from the development standpoint, so you. You came from Flashbang, working with Matt Wagner. Obviously, you guys yeah. worked well together. Yeah. For um, sure. How? When, when you? When did you guys decide, or how did you decide that you were gonna make this game, and how did it kind of come together? Because um, I think like one of the one of the interesting things about a lot of these games is like. Super Space Blank is a school project. Right. Uh, Towerfall is this game that, that started out as a completely different game, and then Matt took in a in a different direction and spent all this time polishing it with the other people in the game on the project. Right. Um, and there's th all these different paths towards how games get made. So yeah. how did Aztec get? So it's really out? funny. Like the it started as a uh, sketch at the first Tick Jam. We hosted the very first Tick Jam at Flashbang like yep. four years ago, five years ago, something like that. And uh, I can't program, so I'm just sitting there by myself, like doing sketches. So I made a sketch. And uh, interestingly enough, it started out completely black and white. Luckily, I've changed this since then because that's brutal. But uh, <laughs> Tommy Refines of Team Meat was there. Yeah. And he was like, holy crap, this looks awesome. We have to make this game. And so Tommy got really excited about it. And he was like, I'm going to help you do this. Let's make it happen. So I'm like, yeah, cool. And uh, so I spent the next you know, eight or nine months just in free time prototyping art, playing with animation, messing around with special effects. And then eventually he hadn't like done a whole lot and I'm like dude is everything okay what's up he's like uh I'm working on the super meat boy game and I'm like okay do that like yeah. you should definitely go and do that because that's fucking awesome and uh so from there I'm like all right I got to find someone else so I actually ended up going through a couple different programmers a buddy of mine a rock star who was too busy launching Red Dead Redemption a friend of mine in Canada who's trying to like feed his family and start a company and so this went on for years with me just like working on it a couple hours at a time whenever I had a little bit of you know evening evening time and I think Matthew eventually felt bad for me because he's, <laughs> he's like dude you've been working on this so hard and there's like so little progress let's spend a couple months on it you know so at the end of like uh, at the end of 2011 uh, like November so he's like yeah you know we got a little bit of time we got some money in the bank let's get this thing banged out like a, you know the, the core system and we did and it ended up super promising so that's about the time that we took it to a couple people and raised the the private investment money to make it happen so that's kind of the origin story it was just me like obsessing for years until someone was like all right let's make this happen that's I mean that's that was us and Bo that's yeah I mean I feel like yep. that's that's kind of a very like 
if, if the idea sticks in your head and you don't push it out with something right. better, right. you got to find a way to make yeah. it. Yeah, and, and that's, that's one of the things Matthew said. He's like, I'm motivated because you're obsessed, and I know you're not going anywhere. Like, I'm yeah. not about to wake up and be like, oh, I don't really want to make Astos. <laughs> and he knows it, you know, and I think that's why, despite all of... I mean, he could do anything. Like, he could literally do anything in the world. Oh, yeah, he's a fucking sure. genius. But he's he's sticking with this because he knows I'm going to carry it through. For sure. And it keeps him motivated, keeps him excited. And so, yeah, that's, uh, uh, another part of the reason our dynamic is awesome, yeah. you know? And, I, and I'm like, there's a, well, I, I love... I love people making games by themselves. I, I think it's a, like a phenomenal and, and super amazing thing that people can do. I love working with people. Yeah. I love the, the development process through teamwork and through oh, yeah. those kind of like give and takes of what does someone else bring to the project. For sure. And I mean, knowing Matthew as well as I do as well, I know yeah. that he's not going to, you know, take upon something like this lightly. And oh, he's yeah. Gonna, he's going to come in and kill it as well. Oh, yeah. He so often gives me more than I ask for when it comes to everything he ever gets asked to do. And it's it's awesome. Like, his, I, I wouldn't want to make this his with apps anyone are fantastic. Oh, and his apps are, you know, he's got like a, a, a seven pack, yeah, 12, you know, however that works. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check in the stream again, see what's going on here. Uh, check it out. Uh, somebody talking about how your passion is infectious. Oh, awesome. Yeah, You're go all, make a thing, please. Also, also thing. your diseases are also infectious. <laughs> your, your diseases are highly gross. So, uh, so what's what's the plan coming up? Uh, what, what can people expect in the future from Aztez? So, um, where yeah. can they check it out? All that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I mean, everything that I ever have to say about the game, I say at Aztez.com, Aztez right. game. Um, and everyone should definitely go there and... If, if you want to read some intense breakdowns of some combat yeah. design and, and, and yeah. beat em up structures, it's, I, it, I, I love those type of games, and I'm just like, okay, you're on a different level than me. <laughs> I like them a lot. Obsession, but anyway, man. That's the check, out, check that part yeah. out, but the rest of it. Yeah, and so, yeah, like I said, anything I ever have to say about the game, anything I have to share, it'll be there. I mean, we have a Facebook and Twitter page. We don't use them a whole ton, um, but, you know, they, they still get important updates. We're getting ready to update Aztez.com soon. It's going to have, you know, more videos and, and because we're getting pretty close to release. We're aiming for January. You know, oh, so, right. So, you know, aiming for January means June, but we'll but see. Q1, you know, let's say Q1. <laughs> right, exactly. that's, that's the aiming publisher way Q1, of doing it. Exactly. Yeah, it's probably Q1 2014. Yeah, yeah. 20 something team. Yeah. We'll see. But One of the teams. But, yeah, but, uh, you know, when it's all said and done, like I said, we'll have four weapons, and, uh, you know, there's, there's, I'm showing off half of the enemy types we have now so far. There's a ton of environments. The metagame structure is coming along, so it, it's hopefully going to be something people can actually play. A lot. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for. Go. Like I said, I'm sick of the beat em up so you play for three hours and never touch, so. But it's not, it's not saying you can't do that, but there's going to be a group well, of people right. that's going to go fucking deep. Right, on this game. right, and exactly. That's, that's the goal, right? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, um, anything else you want to add? Any plugs you want to say? Any shout outs? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I do have uh, my email on the website. So, like, if people ever have questions, they're always welcome to ask, I'm sure. Like, I love talking about shit like this any day. So, yeah, people are welcome to, to hit me up and, and find out about anything. Oh, yeah. Anybody at Evo, uh, come by, check out Aztez, and grab yourourself a badass Aztez t-shirt, flash that shirt. Yeah. Flash that oh, yeah, shirt. yeah. Let's, let's, let's flash yeah. the... It's, it's, some some ultraviolence on pretty. the t-shirt. It's pretty. And we got an Oculus Rift build going on oh, yeah. with the boots, so... That's... Yeah, I can't believe we didn't even talk about yeah. that. You can play Aztez on Oculus. Yeah. It, makes yeah it's very compelling it's weirdly compelling and it's super fun so if you're here come check it out and if not uh it, this is definitely something you guys want to launch on oculus as well oh yeah for sure it, it, i mean it's unity it's such an easy implementation there's no reason not to have and it, it and so. it even just parallax adds such a crazy oh, yeah. interesting yeah gap to it. it's huge all right man thanks a lot for for chatting about some Aztecs, always a pleasure man. yeah um, you know you it smell wonderful Thank and you. Uh, <laughs> i'm glad that you still have a voice for the next oh, like, yeah, couple dude. of days yeah me too man all right so uh, I'm, I'm actually going to see if dave lang wants to step down for dave you want to you want to come say some words for a second and uh and after that we're going to get some samurai gun for all of y'all um so hello nathan vella how are you i'm doing well dave lang so uh the internet's own nathan vella the the internet's own dave lang for everybody uh who's who's uh who's watching the stream right now who's uh checking out the stream my man Dave Lang here is the whole reason this happened. Uh, well, not the whole reason. Well, these great much. developers came. They brought their games. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But but we wouldn't be streaming if. Oh, it wasn't. Samurai Gun. Yeah. This shit's the bomb. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, we love we we both love Samurai. So, uh, quickly, GreenlightDiveKick.com. Yeah, we're uh, Dive Kick is on Greenlight. We've been powering our way through there. We're currently number twenty-five, I think. 
but we need a lot more votes let's, let's to get, get the it, Let's get so it up there. I love, I love DiveKick.com. Just vote yes. Even if you don't like Dive Kick, just do me a solid for fuck's sake. It's not yeah. that tough. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on. Come on, guys. Um, also, um, just uh, wanted to just chat briefly with you about the idea of kind of like Iron Galaxy. You guys have a, like a really rich pedigree, ton of respect. Yeah. Uh, a lot of publishers love the crap out of you guys. Um, teaming up with Divekick, uh, kind of taking this, this like fighting game indie darling, helping them with development, helping yeah, yeah. them with promotion. How did that kind of come together? And Because I, I, I think the idea of developers helping developers is a really like powerful thing that the independent community does really well and we yeah. should keep pushing. It was a pretty specific situation, but I think there's other ways to apply it. So Adam Hart, who's the kind of like creator and originator of Mr. Dive Kicks. Kicks. Yeah, exactly. He, uh, we hired him just to help out with all the fighting game stuff we do. He's like a producer slash designer for us. And one day he's like, hey, I got this fighting game. I'm working on the side with some of my friends. It's this thing. It's two buttons. I'm like, oh, that sounds really dumb. You know, <laughs> like Best then, ideas. That's, that's yeah. the response to the best ideas. Yeah. And then uh, a couple months later, I got to play it finally. And I instantly, like, it was just a prototype basically, but I instantly fell in love with it, right? Yeah. It's like, it's everything I love about fighting games. It's like, I love fighting games, but I stink at all of them because yeah. I don't have time to spend like in the lab learning like a 720 and three buttons to do, and yeah. I just can't do it. I don't have that Doing time. Doing a 720 yet. in one frame. Right. And so uh, Divekick just spoke to me at that level, and at that point, it's like, well, I love this game. Uh, I like Adam a lot. It's, there has to be a way we can work, it, work something out to have this make sense for everybody. And uh, we talked for a couple months, and at first he was a little reluctant because he was worried you know, I would try to take the game and change it or something. But then slowly we got comfortable with the whole thing, and uh, about, what, December, January, started working on it full time, and uh, here we are. And that's, that, I think that's how a lot of the best kind of, like, I say business relationships, but they're not, they're, most of them are not founded on business. They're founded on how, like, comfort levels and, and like, what people bring and yeah. how those, like, how comfort, like, how, how good everyone feels about the scenarios. Like, that was the exact experience that we had with, with Sword and Sorcery, yeah. where we, we met Craig and realized pretty quickly that, like, through some conversations and a bunch of beer, we could figure out a way to make this work because we're like you just get that vibe, and I think I think that's part of the reason why we've seen Dive Kick blow up so well is because yeah. like the like you and Keats together are a team of people that like both respect yeah. what each other it, brings. It's one of those things too that like wouldn't happen at a like normal game company because like the owner would be like, oh, I already own that idea, and he'd be like, well, fuck you, I'm not going to work on it then, and just like getting not worried about money, not worried about owning it. Obviously, those things all matter, of course, right? But like. It can't but that's be, not the deciding that's factor. not what it's about, right? Yeah. It's about mutual respect. It's about like, let's make this awesome thing together. It's about let's, frauds. Yeah, exactly. And frauds hits. and chokes and all yeah. the fun stuff. And that's that's the only reason it works, right? Is because he trusts me, I trust him, and we just want to make awesome shit. And I, and I think like, I mean, I know I've talked to you, talked to you about it before. Um, I, I think it's one of those like things that has worked very well. Yeah. Like I think it's, it's, it's been a super amazing thing to see like, uh, Iron Galaxy and, and the dive kick thing kind of come together and, and become like it's 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 a big thing now. Yeah. It's people are excited for it. The live stream tonight at seven when you're talking about release date, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. I'm very excited about that. Talking about price, whole bunch of other awesome news. Uh, everyone should tune in for that. Yeah, um, it, it's cool for us too because this is like a, we learned a lot during this. Like this is the first thing we've ever self funded and self published and. Like we have a learning experience there, like how do you sell games? How do you yeah. get people excited about games? And it's and, all on your back, right? Yeah, like you gotta do it yourself. Yeah. And so that's been, the whole thing's been amazing and really fun. You know, we're still gonna do the publisher stuff. We're still gonna do all that because that pays the bills. And one day maybe this stuff will pay all the bills, but until yep. then we're gonna do a mix, you know? Yep, we've been there ourselves. And, yeah. I, and I think like part of, part of like the, the part of independent development that doesn't get talked about a lot is the idea of like how do you provide those opportunities to do a dive cake? And sometimes like when you guys, you know, can kill a, you know a third strike yeah. on XBLA and PSN or like that style that that type of like super awesome game done extremely well because I play yeah. the crap out of that game and it's a fantastic oh, port. Um, it, it it starts building these opportunities and this knowledge yeah. that you can then bring to other projects. Yeah, it's one of those things like people in Evo. You know, they knew about us before we ever got involved with Dive Kit, right? Yeah. They knew about Keats. They knew about Iron Galaxy. So then when they hear, like, oh, those guys that do all those awesome ports and clearly love, put a lot of love into those games, even though they're not their own, 
they're getting together with Adam, who they all know. Of course. It's like, it just makes sense. Like yeah. you're saying, it feels natural, doesn't feel forced. Yep. No one's and no one's smelling that sniff of, of like, oh, yeah. it kind of reeks of, of effort yeah, or yeah, yeah. Of, of marketing dollars yeah. or something like that. This sounds like it, a cash grab. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Dive Kick doesn't sound like it. Dive Kick sounds like a game that is going to come out, uh, surprise a lot of people with how, I think, how well it'll do, uh, especially when we find out when it's coming out. Yeah, um, I kind of wish that I knew right now. I'll tell uh, you when the stream goes down. Okay, that's cool. All right, so we're going to bring Bo Blythe, developer of Samurai Gun, right. in. Peace. Dave. Thanks, sir. Thanks so much, brother. No Super appreciate no it. This has been radical. Uh, somebody is requesting that you mocap some dive kick on stream. All right, so we're going we're gonna to hook up some, some Samurai Gun for all of y'all. Uh, this will be the last game that we're going to talk about right now. Um, Thanks to everyone who's checked out the stream so far. Uh, I hope that you don't mind that I was drinking a bit of Bud Light on the stream. That's that's pretty uh, not scandalous. That's not cool. Um, yeah. Uh, so, what's up, man? Let's shake some hands. Uh, Let's talk going? about some Samurai Gun. Uh, I first saw this game like Super Space. Like I, I saw this game for really for the first time at Indicate last year. Uh, during there was a tournament going on at night. I saw yeah. I saw Pendleton Ward playing it a bit. Yeah, um, he's <laughs> an awesome dude. Yeah, um, they're, yeah. Uh, Seth is now stealing my Miller Light beer, which I had in backup for my Bud Light beer. Double scan. So, give us a breakdown. What is Samurai Gun? Why is it so friggin' fun? Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Samurai Gun is a, a lightning fast like Bushido brawler with guns, and uh, everyone has three bullets for life, and you can uh, hit back bullets with your sword, and uh, you know, if, if you have like really great reflexes and like great timing and stuff, you can hit bullets up and like everywhere, any direction, and you can cut off people's heads if you jump above them a little bit, and it's, it's all about like timing and pacing, and um, I think a great moment uh, when, you know, I was just first showing the game around and stuff, and I showed it at Giant Robot, and uh, there was a showdown. If, if you get two uh, scores that are like really close to each other, then it goes to a sunset showdown. And it's just a flat field. You start at like opposite ends. And the sun's going down slowly. And, um, and they were just standing there. And, uh, and one would kind of inch forward, and the other would kind of inch. And they were just like staring each other down. And it was like a true samurai moment. And I really enjoyed that. I was like, oh, I didn't know this could happen. But it's really great. I <laughs> well, one of the things that I really enjoy about playing the game uh, is those moments, is those kind of like really specific, like outside of the like typical, like I'd shot you straight across the map. Those ones where, you know, you you manage to get the timing right and use your sword to deflect a bullet or where you manage to like do a, like drop down through the map, perfect yeah. timing, cut the person. <laughs> like it, it feels like there's a lot of these like really amazing pseudo intentional happy accidents in the game that are totally skill based because it is a very skill based game. Yeah, like the controls are very simple, but I, I really like to watch how, how people play it differently. They add a lot of personality to like the way the characters move and stuff. And even with uh, the dog character, when you look up, his mouth opens and a lot of people like they play that character and they win, they like make him talk at the end <laughs> and like mouth the words. And it's, it's great to see what people will do with kind of like this basic rule set I've put out. So uh, you were mentioning, so we had a, an EVO Indie Showcase panel that Bo was on and, and spoke a lot about the game. You were mentioning kind of how this idea came into being. And, it, and I, think, I think it's a great story that, that kind of speaks a lot about like why, like independent development in general, but also like why this game is actually awesome. Right. Uh, so I, uh, the game was born at a party uh, where uh, a bunch of friends were there and we were watching uh, Tommy Wiseau's The Room for like one too many times, which is like once, twice. It's, don't, yeah, yeah it's, that's. So I was like, I don't want to watch this again. And uh, I turned to my friend Jacob, and I'm like, uh, Hey, like I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a game. So I'm bored. And I was like, What should I make it about? And he's like, Samurai. And I was like, With guns as an oxymoron and sort of like a challenge uh, for myself. And then um, it turned out really fun, and I'm really uh, lucky that I had him there with me to play test. Because, uh, like, you know, I was getting active feedback from the moment the game, like, the first line of code was put down. Like, he would, you know, we'd play it together and, like, oh no, we're moving too fast or we're jumping too high. And, um, and then I would just tune it and then we'd be like, wow, this is, this is working out, this is fun. And, um, and then I would just kind of, like, 
doctor it and be like, all right, you know, nothing happens when swords clash. It's like, what should happen when swords clash? And we're just kind of like, you know, in humorous mood or whatever. You should just fly extremely far backwards. And then um, I remember, I, I believe it was uh, uh, Cactus. Uh, I said, I think it was him. He said the best thing I've ever learned was, um, or the best advice I ever got was make the explosions bigger. And so, <laughs> and it's so true though. Uh, so like, yep. I, I was like, okay, you get knocked back, but I was like, but do you like, I. I was just like, I'm just going to multiply that by three, and then you just like fly across the screen, and then I was like, oh, well, what should happen when you hit a wall, and you should, you should just ricochet off, and it ended up being like really exciting and fun, and you know, you and wouldn't normally have done that if you, you know. I think it's it, it's really interesting the, like, you can, I, I feel like you, uh, games that have this kind of high amount and fast turnaround of iteration always end up with these really like super tight feeling, like it, the game feels very, very tight, um, and that's, it's like everybody wants to have that. Um, do you yeah. think it's mostly because of the iteration, the, the kind of like that loop that you went through so it, many times? It definitely, it definitely helps. Uh, like, feel, game feel is something I really fuss over. Like, I'll just, I'll tweak a spark effect for like three hours until I hate the game, and I've actually like quit projects that way because I would <laughs> fuss over something so meaningless and uh, like, but it would look great, and I would just hate the game because I played it too much. And um, and this this uh, worked out better because. Uh, I think when you have someone with there with you to, to say like no what you're doing is cool like I'm really enjoying this and you get to watch them play and like see what they're enjoying and like how they're playing it, it it's a much better experience than being in your room alone and being like is this fun like I mean I like it but you know you've been staring at it too much you don't know what to think of it it's this close to you all the time yeah and then like you're just like Ugh. and and I've actually taken a break of working on this because I had to handle some other stuff. But uh, looking back at it now, I'm like, oh, I have like a new way to look at this, Fresh like new things to do. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, and know. I think I, th I really think that perspective is a very like important thing. It's it's why we do like internal game jams and why we exactly. really try to get people to go to game jams as well. Like just break out from having everything right in front of your face all of the time. Yeah. Um, so in Samurai Gun, two to four players. Two players feels very different from four players, which is really and we're seeing I've heard this. we're seeing yeah. four player action right it's now, um, real hectic. <laughs> which gets like really intense and crazy. Yeah, um, the two player ends up being this kind of like giving. It actually reminds me a ton of Bushido Blade for PS1, oh, yeah. uh, which I adore, um, at, including the showdown points with the stare offs, um, which I, I think it's amazing to see a game that like reminds me of that that probably has absolutely nothing to do with it, but. Um, <laughs> I've got a lot of like Smash Brothers and yep. stuff like that, and probably because from the Ricochet, the zoomed out perspective, I would imagine. For sure. Uh, but that's like that's just great, <laughs> like a oh. thing to be compared to. Definitely. So so you're obviously pretty good at the game. What's what like? How do you typically play? Like, do you are you a uh, hold back the bullets? Because there is this really strong strategic give and take between using your three bullets, which never recharge, which right. like you can't get more of. Versus trying to use your sword, which you always have access to, and can relatively like you can't mash, but you can use it pretty quickly. Like what's yeah, the, yeah. how do you deal with that? There balance? is a, yeah, there's a pretty significant delay on the sword, um, and it didn't used to be that way. That was one of the things that really uh, was great to have someone test play with it. When I changed that, we were like, oh, this is a different game. Right, and you um, can't just sit there. Yeah, yeah. I'm, um, my girlfriend Sido has like helped me test this like throughout, like even. Like after the party, uh, I would always show her the game after I've been working on it, and then like you know we'd be like, oh like I see what I'm what I need to do next and stuff like that. It's it's always helped having another pair of eyes on the game. Um, but as far as my strategy goes, uh, I'd say I I'm uh, I do more more of a like a stone statue like strategy. Uh, me and Jan Willem were joking on Twitter. We're like because uh, he. He was like one of the first people I sent this game to test, and he'd be like, "I can't wait to challenge you with my like extreme Buddha strategy and like or my still is water." And we were just like messing around, but but then it's like you can actually like play in various ways. So what I like to do is uh, like stand still a lot and just kind of observe, and then people come close and they'll just kind of tap it and jump forward, and then like you know always I'm always trying to cut off their heads just because it's like you know because you know that can happen and it's fun as hell. Yeah, and I know it can happen, and um. And uh, I'll I'll try and uh, conserve bullets, I guess. Yeah, or I, I'm actually more watching for bullets to hit the Mac because uh, like people don't know that can happen either. Um, I've seen people play really strange ways in a in a, uh, the Wild Rumpus at GDC. Yeah, uh, which was super super radical, by the way. It was insane. Yeah, I, <laughs> I wish the game wasn't uh, as broken, but but that's fixed now. I don't um, think anybody noticed. Oh, that's good. <laughs> 
But uh, uh, the winner, uh, I forget his name, but he, he had a great strategy. And I don't know if this is what he was trying to do, but it, it's what it looked like to me. He was, he was first of all, abusing uh, the wall jump. He would kind of stick to walls, and that's something nobody does. But, you know, you have to think differently about how you're going to approach someone who's on the wall because they can either, like, slide down and stick to the wall and get you from under or, like, jump or, like, shoot. You know, you, you don't really know what they're going to do because right. they're, like, dancing on these walls. So, uh, and then very the other quick thing, movement, yeah, like jittery almost. You, yeah, you just see him like tap in it, and that's that's strange. And, and the people who fought him were like scared to move out of their spawn points. They would just stay there because they didn't <laughs> know what he was doing. They kept thinking he was gonna fall, and then he would just stay up there, and they'd move out, and he would just drop and get them. And it was just like, wow, it was, it was uh, a very mental game. A lot so, of, yeah. I'm a I'm a big fan of those kind of like uh, like emergent stuff. Like you can you can kind of like find these weird things that happen. Uh, one thing that also worth mentioning is these like destructible environment levels. Oh, I um, love and and, and I mean, there's a lot of very different asymmetrical level design in it. That a lot of it, like, like the one we're watching right now, relies entirely on destructible levels or, or destructible environment stuff. Right. Yeah, it's like constantly changing. In this level, the gram the the bamboo grows back, and um, the whole bottom row is just instant death spikes. And, um, so yeah, it gets almost like cat and mousey playing with the spikes versus yeah. the swords versus the yeah yeah and it's you don't know where you're gonna spawn so you're like you know always like waiting to see where you have to move as you drop out of the ceiling and yeah uh, some people find that too hectic and some people really love it so uh, so are um, character classes visual or actually advantages um they're all just uh, visual just for looks now. yeah I um, experimented with uh, character move speeds, yeah, move speeds and stuff and and I tried weapons at one point I had a shorter sword that you could swing faster and I had a bomb but I took those out because they made everything feel less significant and what I really liked about this game uh, after I, I'd shown it around for a bit was uh, people weren't afraid to come up and play it right um, especially when I've had like NES controllers out they're like oh I can use that and um and like people uh, some people who just like don't play games um, like really enjoy it and that's really great so i want to yeah. keep it like accessible and while you may have to sacrifice like uh you know long-term debt i i still think it's something valuable yeah i'm a i'm a big proponent and i was talking I'm a, i feel like i've talked to pretty much every developer about the idea of like simplicity actually enabling depth like to happen easier right mm -hmm. because then it then it required like i think depth comes from strategy and use of options rather than adding more options right that's uh, yeah. and and so I, mean, I think that's why that's why it works i think that's why people a game that you can pick up quickly means that you can spend more time with the the the, the minutia um, if you want to if you don't want like I, I think samurai gun works as a pick up and play game yeah and i want to keep it that way definitely yeah so um, what's what's the plan for the game? Like it's you're, uh, you mentioned also during the panel that you were uh, like now you're starting to really think about platforms and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, a lot of um, decisions to be made. But I guess my main plan is I I want to I want to get it out as soon as possible, and I want um, to put it out on as many things as possible. Yeah. So that might happen later, but I I really do want to finish it and and get back to working on it and like flesh it out. Because uh, I don't know, I don't want to sit on it for too long. You got a good thing going. Yeah. Um, and uh, working on it by yourself. You yeah. got you got a crew. Uh, you... It was just me for uh, about a year, and um, now I've got uh, my friend Roger Hicks, who's helping me uh, port it to Unity. Yep. And um, and some other folks that are helping with a lot of a lot of cool stuff that I'm really excited to be able to show there. <laughs> but. Uh, How's the how's the the Evo experience been so far? Is your first is your first Evo? Uh, yeah, this is my first Evo and my first time in Vegas, which is no crazy. Shit. Yeah, that's probably a good thing actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're like paralyzed when I go outside. Like, oh wow, it's like a. I haven't giant actually been outside Disneyland. since I landed. <laughs> yeah, um, lots of great, lots of good feedback. Lots of people trying to break it. Lots of. Um, yeah, I haven't really been hovering over my booth much. Uh, You're just but, letting people go. Yeah, but it's it's great to see people like approach it and play without me having to be there and explain it. But um, I, I'm excited to kind of I don't know, ask some questions, be like, oh, what do you think? What you know? How how would you? I don't know. I don't really know. <laughs> just, <laughs> just at, at just least like, yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Seeing people go and pick it up and then watching them play yeah, is, is probably, in my opinion, the best part about being sense. here, especially yeah. because there's not a single person in this, like, of these thousands of people who don't play games pretty seriously. Um, 
And I think it's, it's a really great opportunity for a game like this to be put through some serious uh, yeah. alternative testing. Yeah, that's uh, yeah one of my hopes for uh, Evo, people playing at Evo is like I, I hope they break it, or I hope I see something I haven't seen before where it's like, oh, okay, now I, I have to like uh, you know fix that or change it or acknowledge it in some way. I'm just gonna check out the chat here, see what's All going right. on, if there's any questions. Can you shoot and slash at the exact same time? Uh, no, you cannot. There is a delay for both. There, I, I believe there's a shorter delay for shooting, though. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, someone asking, is there going to be online? Um, I've been thinking about it. I, I think it would be cool. Uh, Huge challenge development-wise, obviously. Oh, god, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. But, I, yeah, I'd like to look into it. Awesome. Uh, anything else you want to say about the game? Any kind of uh, famous last words? Uh, uh, Shoutouts? Uh, I hope a lot of people will play it. <laughs> and uh, uh. <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to pick it up on a whole bunch of different platforms in the near future. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about the game. I, oh, thanks. I loved watching it. I thought it was amazing to see on a big screen at IndieCade. I think it's amazing that to was, see people play yeah. it here. It's, it's like, it's such a f an obvious fan favorite for all the right, not just because it's like retro or something, because it's actually yeah. like, you get it very quickly and then you start figuring out, oh my God, there's like a, it's an onion, uh, a virtual onion, peeling thanks. back layers uh, of strategy. Yeah, that's what I, I really try to do. Like, I, I don't even want to tell people that they can change costumes on the character select by pressing up and down. Like, you know, I, I like to keep a lot of things yeah. secret because then you're like, oh, I see it in this whole, a whole new way. And I think that's really rewarding as a player. So I, w I want to try and make games. There's, like a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of love on the stream chat, too. Lots of people really excited about the oh, game. Bo, super pleasure, man. Uh, great talking I'm really, to you. really glad that uh, Samurai Gun is here at EVO. Uh, super excited. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we should all be thanking Tom Cannon. He's the man with a master plan. All He's right. the guy who hooked us up with the space and, and <laughs> thanks Tom yep so uh, all right guys um, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off uh, I really appreciate everyone checking it out uh, we might try to do another one of these uh, if we can get Dave Lang drunk enough to say yes again um, but again I uh, if you guys enjoy the stream, if you guys enjoy uh, Evo Indie Showcase, that kind of stuff, how about the Dive Kick, guy, dive kick guys, uh, greenlightdivekick.com. Uh, check out their stream tonight if you're interested in Dive Kick. Uh, we're gonna, like, there's a Barra Bari Ball tournament going on tomorrow. There's a Dive Kick tournament going on tomorrow. Um, we're gonna, there's a Treachery and Beatdown City, PlayStation Mobile. Uh, really worth checking out. Uh, it's an amazing looking game. You guys should hit up the trailer online. Uh, we got uh, a crew from the NYU Game Center here, uh, which is really, really radical. Uh, Super Combo Man, uh, my, you know, those guys were here last year. Really love that team. Uh, Super Combo Man is a fantastic looking game. The EVO Indie Showcase is uh, like, it's really close to my heart and I really appreciate everyone out there who is supporting it. Uh, I super appreciate all the developers that came on the stream, but everybody else who's here, uh, talking to everyone, you know, being super open, trying to like spread the, the, the gospel of how <laughs> rad it is to develop the games that you want to make. Uh, everybody uh, make games. Yeah, that's, that's the word. Uh, that's why we're here at Evo. Uh, huge thanks to Tom Cannon for, for hooking it up. Uh, tons of love to Seth Killian for coming on. Seth is the like, I mean, he's, He's a great friend of mine, but he's also like a super passionate about independent development. Is doing everything he can to to you know him and Nathan Gary at Sony Santa Monica, really trying to help you know bring independent games into that side of Sony. Uh, they're working on Hohokam with with uh, Dick and Ricky. Uh, that game looks fantastic. Uh, and yeah, if anybody has kind of like questions about the Evo Indie Showcase or anything like that, hit me up at at Cappy underscore Nathan on Twitter. I'll answer some questions. Um, little shout out to uh, the whole Cappy crew, uh, Super Time Force, we got a whole bunch of cool stuff coming up with that game. Uh, if you like ex exploding things and time travel, uh, go to www.supertimeforce.com or capybaragames.com. And yeah, EVO Indie Showcase, first day of EVO has been ridiculous. We're going to check out some Super Street Fighter 4 quarters, semifinals, it's going to be off the hook. We're going to probably play some dive kick. Um, and yeah, I really appreciate everyone who came through talking in the in the chats, uh, who checked out the the stream. Uh, this was a lot of fun, and 
Gosh darn, the games are super rad. Oh, and, it's so good. And even better <laughs> than the games being super rad here, uh, all the developers are here uh, talking about the games, and they're all super rad people like my man Bo here. So, yeah, thanks, everyone. We super appreciate it. Again, big thanks to the people at, at Iron Galaxy, uh, including my man right here who's running the stream right now. <laughs> high fives. Thank you. For, that was the worst high five that I've given anyone in a while, but that's okay. Totally cool. I'm going to have some more Bud Light, and uh, thanks, everyone. We're out. Peace. And thanks to all the players. Thanks to Kyle Pulver, who has played <laughs> e literally every game yeah. that we've had up there. And school people. Yeah. I'm Kyle Jeez. Pulver. I'm good at video games. <laughs> uh, he, Kyle man. has the best Sakura <laughs> in independent. And he should have entered Evo, by the way. Uh, he would have actually done really well. All right, guys. Signing off. Thanks, everyone. Uh, much love. Here we go. Uh, time to drink boost.